Um, this is going to be the first of our keynotes. Um, Adrian has uh, easily the most amount of stuff up on stage that I've ever seen at both a JSConf and a RobotsConf. This is going to be an absolute blast. So here is Adrian. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Adrian. I'm from the land of Eternal Spring, also known as Guatemala. We have uh, beautiful colors, architecture, landscape, and robots. Um, I co-founded a mobile development studio in Guatemala. Also, I'm an Android GDE. And um, the thing is, I'm a passionate educator. So although I'm a software developer, I work as an educator in a university. And when you're an educator, I believe you are also a lifelong learner. And I'm here today to uh, tell you a story about a project we're working on, the Oculus Head. You can see the old stuff uh, here around the table. And I'd like to tell you how this came to be. It's still a work in progress. Uh, I know you can see uh, all the wires and battery and all the things uh, here. But let me begin with a question. Do you like robots? Yeah. Yes! We're here for the robots. But why do we like robots? Have you ever wondered? I have liked robots, video games, and uh, stuff like that since I was a kid. Um, I, I have watched this movie like a million times, and even though it's not exactly a robot, a robot it's more like a mecha. Um, I believe that curiosity is in our, in our DNA. We are all natural inquisitive about everything. And we like robots because, in some way, it empowers us to experiment, to learn, to feed that curiosity of ours. Well, I like to tell real-life stories um, when I give a, a talk. Not everyone likes their, their story to be shared, so I'm going to tell you my story. I've always liked to build. When I was a little kid, I have, um, I've always was playing with Lego, building stuff, trying to build a, sort of a robot with Lego. Um, so the thing is, I believe that when you build, you get empowered. There's a sense of pride in making, in making something work by yourself. That's me a few years ago about to experiment a flow of electrons passing through my body for the first time. <laughs> As it turns out, you get a tingling sensation. <laughs> well, um, I got a story from my mom that she bought a, a gift for a friend for a party, a clock. And when the day arrived, she couldn't find the gift. She got very worried because she couldn't find a gift, and also, she couldn't find me. After looking for a while, she found both of us. Me and the clock all disassembled. Hiding behind, be, behind a couch, I was there. I don't remember this, but it's a story very special for me, because it shows that, in a, in a sense, I always have liked to build, to disassemble, to learn how things work. I believe that's something natural in all of us. But for some reasons, um, a lot of people forget this. In a, I have a, a very opinionated uh, sense of, um, a, a very opinionated point of view about the educational system. I'm, I'm not going to talk about it. But for many reasons, we forget that we like to learn, to experiment, to learn by doing. So I think the important thing about this weekend is that we got a great opportunity to start. We got all these amazing things. Uh, last year, I felt like I was in Disneyland. There were a lot of 3D printer drones, Arduinos. 
And for me, it was very special being part of uh, RobotsConf last year because that was the first time that I was able to light an LED by myself. Although I have spent the last year working on uh, workshops for our university students, I was mo more on the uh, ad more on the administer uh, side of the of the things. I never had done something by myself, and this is a great opportunity. We need to start. We need a like a tipping point to start building things, and with that also we need to have in mind that we need to give us permission to be wrong. A lot of things are not going to work on the first try. And when you're getting experience and you're getting better on doing things, we easily forget how is being a rookie, how it feels like. So an important thing about doing a project, making things, is letting us, letting us the permission to be wrong. I have been teaching in university for a while now, and every time I tell the students a story about the bike, and ask them, how do you learn how to ride a bicycle? Usually, the answers are, well, mom helped me, dad helped me, big brother, big sister, but the thing is, none of them, whoever who taught us how to ride a bike, used a blackboard, um, we didn't wrote an essay on the parts of the bicycle. Whoever taught us to ride a bike was by our side like a coach, empowering us, pushing us. But we learned that by doing by falling from the bike and getting back again. That, exactly, that is exactly a way that we work on making things. Even though it's, it's something as simple as lighting an LED. When you do this for the first time, it's a magical moment. And you get a great feeling like, I am serious! When I saw some, someone Experimenting that, and I experienced that myself, I wanted that for as many people as I could reach. So I've been working that on Guatemala. And also, I noticed that when you start building uh, small like this, you want more. And RobotsConf, it's a great opportunity to do that. If you're beginning, it's a great opportunity to start. But if you already know some tools, some uh, frameworks, some hardware, it's a great opportunity to build any crazy idea that you have. Our crazy idea is this. Well, um, getting a uh, step back on the hello world, I ask a few people, how does that make you feel? Here are some ideas, but I'd like to tell a story about a teenage girl that was in one of our workshops. We were working on um, moving a servo. It was already late, the workshop was already over, but she was there struggling to make it work. Her phone was ringing and she kept ignoring it until she was able to make, make it work. She moved the servo. Then she took the phone, it was her mom. She was so happy telling, mom, it worked, I did it. And her mom was waiting on her. You could hear the, the yelling, I've been waiting for you for like a half an hour. And then in a like, magical moment, the mom realizes how important is this for her daughter and just share the joy with her. It was, it was a small thing, just moving a servo. Maybe a lot of us have work on that, maybe we can just do that in a few minutes. But for her, it was important. And I would like to, um, in a like of a little 
dreamy sense of uh, mine to all those teenagers that are, that are taking our workshops will someday use technology to build something, to improve the quality of everyone's lives. So, um, getting more details on the project, our first step was getting some cool toys or tools. There are like uh, this bunch of tools available and really easy to get, like the Oculus Rift, like Google Glass, like Leap Motion, like the Pebble, and almost all of them have already pre-built APIs that are really easy to use. So our first step was getting all this bunch of toys and playing with them. Our next step was learning how to use those tools or toys. Uh, the picture is for a um, 3D printed claw with a control with the lip motion. You can see the, the lip on the left-hand side of the picture. That was sort of our first experiment. Since the beginning, we're, we have been working with uh, JavaScript and Johnny5. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the story in a few slides. But that project was built by a, a student, a CS student. And it was great getting to a sort of a milestone. Even though it's something simple, for us was like applying the tools. It's, it's not uh, enough to have the tools. You need to learn how to use them. Um, an important side note here is build that for yourself. This might be a product someday. Um, whatever you're making might improve the quality of life of a lot of people. But when you are starting, build it for yourself. You don't need to think about how you're going to sell it yet. Maybe someday you will think of that. You don't need to think about uh, if it's the, I don't know, correct packaging, if, the, um, if you are going to refactor the code, etc. Build this for yourself. Enjoy the process of building it. Maybe no one else is going to use it, only you. But it, that's enough. And also, choose your building blocks. We have been told for this project like a million times to abandon JavaScript and build it on C++. For a lot of time, robotics had been only for uh, PhD students or uh, researchers. But I, I believe that the important thing about Johnny5 and all this movement is the community. So we chose JavaScript. We bet on JavaScript and on Johnny5 Johnny because of the community. Because a lot of people is actively working on this. And you can share what you are doing. You can pick any tool you like, any building block that you like. But keep in mind that this will be part of your project. Um, so getting more details, um, I have failed math since I have use of memory. <laughs> Somehow I managed to get an uh, engineering degree. Actually, I uh, started to enjoy math when I learned how to program. Uh, I learned to code in, in university. But uh, for uh, almost um, all K-12 and high school, I really struggled with math. And I know a lot of people have this, uh, I don't know, like fear? Like, it's like math is like the boogeyman. And it's almost certainly that a project, a cool project in robotics is going to include math. So there will be math. Have no fear. You're going to learn the tools. You're going to learn how to use it. For us, it was Euler angles. I didn't remember that from my time in university. But it, somehow, when you're working this in a community, in a team, and you can combine all of the skills, it's going to work, or you're going to 
find something, uh, so, uh, a way to make it work. Um, we're um, using a library for, the, for um, converting the values from the Oculus Rift to the um, moving of the servos. We're using 3.js. This is a powerful library. We plan to use it for a lot of more things, but right now we're using just for the, for the angles. Um, what else? You need to prototype. A few years ago, you need to build a PowerPoint slide deck when you had an idea and a lot of details to tell everyone your idea. But not, that's not the case anymore. Now you can build a prototype. Maybe it's a rough version. Maybe it, it no, it's not working as you would like, but it's so easy to build something. That was our first prototype. 3D printed with a small servo. And also, as you prototype, welcome with open arms, uncertainty. Um, I have something on this slide, I don't remember exactly what, but I changed it last night as when uh, I opened my bag, I found uh, the robot all in pieces. Even though I thought, though I wrapped it in a good ways so it could uh, survive the, the trip. It broke in several parts, so I spent the night trying to put it back together. If you approach to it, uh, you will see that the, the face is um, two and a half. Uh, several parts of the mechanism are not working. Hopefully the demo will work in a few minutes, but the thing is, when you're working something that no one else has made it before, or no one else has made it with the tool that you have, there are some things that are going to be out of your control. It's OK. Welcome uncertainty. Know that you will not control everything, that something will go wrong, and always have a plan B, or plan C, or D. Um, last night, I was thinking, OK, if this doesn't work, maybe I could be a stand-up comedian for half an hour? <laughs> Having um, a live demo, it's not easy. Debugging hardware, it's um, more difficult than debugging software. Actually, I think that's why I pick CS instead of electronics, because um, I'm really clumsy with uh, building stuff. But somehow, even though with that limitations, I have managed to build robots as I someday dream. So after prototyping, iterate. This is easy to read, but it's hard to do. It's like refactoring code. That's another for our prototypes with a camera. Doing iterations on a project, it's difficult because as you build it, you see how much effort have you put into this. And it's not always easy to turn that away. Start small. Start with something that's important. Don't postpone it. Don't uh, wait for having the right tools. Don't wait for uh, the right framework. Don't wait. Start. We started as just as simple as moving a couple of servos. We started as getting the input from the Oculus Rift. We're using a library for that. And after you start, when you are doing the iterations, make it bigger and better. You are going to go through a lot of um, iterations, a lot of debugging, a lot of refactoring of hardware. That's another of our uh, prototypes. Um, I think it uh, in the picture doesn't uh, looks right, but the the lower parts, the lower part of the of the mechanism is a box, a cardboard box. I believe it was from the one of our cables. We needed something, and that was the only thing available. That's the demo we use at the Maker Fair in New York. That's the, um, uh, our team at the Galileo University. We're working this project with uh, Luis. He's the, on the right-hand side. There's also Andrea and Monica. We work as a team 
in all of our efforts in the university. And I think that's one of the most important things. None of us are building this alone. Even though we are not all act uh, actively working on the same project, we can help with our skills when it is needed. OK, uh, that's another important point. Never stop to amaze. I like this concept from uh, Zen Buddhism, uh, Buddhism that's, uh, I don't know exactly how it's uh, the word. I believe it's Shoshin. It's like the mind of a beginner. As we progress on our skill set, we usually forget how, how was to be a rookie. Keep that in mind. Approach the problems with a beginner's mind. Don't have preconceptions. This is a work in progress. There are some pictures that I took uh, yesterday. We are working on this. We will be working on this for a while. Um, I like a quote by the Imagineers, the engineers that work at Disney, that you finish a project when you are out of time or out of money. Hopefully, for us, this will be in the future. <laughs> I'm going to show you a few videos. That's the mechanism of the neck, of the movement uh, sideways. That's uh, the movement up and down. Actually, that's not going to work on the demo. That part uh, is broken. Uh, here is another video. It looks pretty creepy without the eyes. <laughs> and with the movement, uh, I don't know, it was, it was like the Exorcist movie. And here's working. I was hoping to show all this movement here. There are some cameras in the, in the eyes, so whoever is using the, the Oculus can see what the robot can see. We are showing the demo only on one computer, but it works uh, using binary JS, so you can use um, a computer with the robot and a computer with the headset. We are leveraging a lot in the InMove project. This is, um, it's supposed to be a full robot, but it's only built right now from the waist up. We want to print that. This is a project we're working with uh, several people. Now it's only this. Actually, there's another, like, line of the torso that I took out. But as we progress using these uh, 3D models, we're adding our own designs. And that's an a, a important thing, because there's this uh, thing called the imposter syndrome that we all experience in, uh, in different ways. For us, and especially for uh, the guy who is designing the tree stuff, I have seen his progress, and it's amazing. I remember a, a quote of a book that I like a lot that's um, named the, the Art of Game Design. And in that book, the author says, all you need to be a game designer is close your eyes and say for yourself, I am a game designer. And that's it. If you are not yet convinced, close your eyes and say it louder, I am a game designer. So my invitation for us this weekend is exactly that. Close your eyes and say, I am a maker. I am a uh, roboticist. I am a hardware guy or I am a ha hardware girl. Be what you want to be. Build what you want to build. For us was this crazy project. And we're adding more building blocks. Google launched the um, uh, cardboard. We want to replace the Oculus Rift because it's not easy to get a, the um, uh, development kit. We're still working on this. It works, but at a rate that it's almost impossible to see something like five or six frames per second. I don't know yet how, but we're going to make this work. 
And I think that's part of building something. You're going to find a lot of challenges in the, in the way. But it doesn't matter because there is an invitation from the world for us to play, to roll up our sleeves and make something. Making, whatever you are making, builds character. It's not easy to start. And you need a lot of, um, a lot of time and a lot of effort to get better at it. Whatever you're building, do it in a community. That's a, a picture of our Notebooks Guatemala community. I really love the, the meetings because you can see high school students, university students, and season developers working side by side, learning together. If you already know something, share it. Because everyone should be able to experiment, to learn. Um, it's a little, uh, the picture is a little cut. Here are some um, bow bots. I love that picture because everyone is so focused on looking their, their work. It was sort of a sumo fight slash race slash demo. Whatever it was, they all are enjoying. So stop wondering. Go and build something and share. The top left picture, it's uh, me and Ceci at the JSConf with our Node Rocket. All of our pictures are our Node Rocket event at Guatemala. You can see most of the participants are really young. On the top right, um, the black shirt, it's Christian. He's a nine-year-old leader of his team. Somehow he managed to give orders to university students, to developers, and the thing is, it worked. The, the, the rocket worked. It not only flew, but the parachute opened. We really had a great time doing that. That's the important thing about sharing, because this room has like, I don't know, 100, 200 people, but there are a lot of people around the world wanting to do that. We have the tools here but it only lasts two days. Don't stop after the conference is over. Build, share, and do it together. Hacking together is awesome. That's another picture of our uh, Notebooks meetup. Create. Whatever is in your imagination, you can do it. Maybe not as good as your uh, picture in the first version, but that's the importance about prototypes. And I learned something a, a while back. As our budget and our resources are very limited, I decided to focus on what we have, not what we're missing. There are a lot of challenges, um, a lot of uh, constraints, but when you focus on what you have and you enjoy the, the building, the making, it's really, really a lot of fun. That's my email, my Twitter handle. I'm going to try to show a live demo now. Hopefully, it will work. <laughs> and the plugin was easier to configure with Safari. <laughs> so I'm using Firefox for the server and Safari for the client. And my, and my default browser is Chrome. <laughs> well, at least that works. OK, let's try this. No. No, the ver vertical movement is not working. Um, I'm going to try to fix the, the missing part, and hopefully you can check it out later in the makerspace. If I could uh, do a summary of the, my talk, it will be make. Whatever you want, whenever you want, using the tools that you want. The important thing is make. 
We are uh, doing a, um, still have two minutes. We're doing a project called Engineering Kickstart, working with uh, teenagers. The first year, um, this is a, the Engineering Kickstart program is an idea from Ceci. Raise your hand, Ceci. That's her. Um, we do a pilot for uh, 20 students, 20 high schoolers. Five of them are studying in our university. Another two are studying engineering in another university. This year, we work with 150 students. Next year, I don't know yet how, but we're going to work with 1,000 students. We're working right now with uh, private schools. We want to do it with uh, public schools also. We want to increase the reach, because I believe everyone deserves the chance to learn, to create, to experiment. It doesn't matter where are you from, I believe everyone has the same talent, but not the same skills. So we're working on that gap, closing it, to get the skills to make. Um, if you are interested in the Engineering Kickstart program, as I mentioned, I am an educator, or the Oculus Head project, or if I can help in any way, I'm the co-organizer of uh, three communities, technical communities in Guatemala. Yeah, we're a small country, so <laughs> the same guy is the organizer for three different communities. That's my email. If I can help anyone during the conference, please just uh, talk to me, to write me an email, write me a tweet. If I can do whatever to help anyone getting started, just ping me through any channel. I will be happy to do it. Thank you.